Hi, welcome to Warfare Mindsets. And you must have a warfare mindset if you are determined to win. And today, I just want to share briefly on God's expectation for your life. God's expectation is that you win the war because he sent Jesus Christ to go ahead of us and defeat our adversary Satan on the cross of Calvary. So God expects us to win the war. The Bible tells us that there is a great cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on in this race. So there is a race that you have been called to run and you must win that race. You must be determined to win your race. And if you're going to win your race, you must put God at the center. God must be at the center. Now, there are some who may feel that right from when they were born, they were born to fail. All the decks were stacked against them. There were so many obstacles right from when they were born. And God is saying, maybe you were born to fail, but now you've been born again. You've received a second birth that has cancelled the first birth. So now you are born again to win. And if you're going to win, you must be determined to win. And we all have different races to run. I'm not called to run your race. Neither are you called to run my own race. And some races have more obstacles than other races. And I understand that. And maybe you are running a race with so many hurdles, with so many obstacles. You are going to have to put God at the center of your race. Now, some are running their race on the wrong track because they are trying to be like everybody else. They are trying to be like their neighbor. And so they are running their race on the wrong track. And even if they get to the finish line, it does not count because they ran on the wrong track. Some are running in the opposite direction. Believers, we are called to run our race on the straight and narrow path. If you're running your race on the wide, broad road that leads to destruction, hey, even if you get to the end, there is no price to be won. <laughs> so you must be on the right track, the straight and narrow path, and you must endure the race. Now, if you're determined to win your race, you're going to have to prepare. A race requires preparation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I read verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Run in such a way. In your Bible, underline in such a way. That means there are many ways to run in. But run in such a way that you obtain the prize. There are many means of running, many ways to run. But you must run in such a way. Such a way refers to your strategy to winning the prize. You must have a strategy. You must have some tactics that you employ in the race of life so that you are ahead of the enemy. Now, you must run the race in such a way. So take time to think about the way. Take time to ponder and to reflect. Develop strategy. Develop tactics in warfare so that you can defeat, you can defeat the enemy. So running a race requires a lot of preparation. Usually a race is run in one day. A race can be run in two minutes. Meanwhile, the athletes prepared for years just for a two-minute race. So it requires a level of preparation. Now, many Christians get into the race unprepared. And so on the day of the race, they are unprepared and they begin to panic. And the enemy has an upper hand um, over them. So it's going to require a lot of preparation if you're determined to win, if you're truly determined to win, you must take time to prepare because you're wrestling not with flesh and blood. You're wrestling with principalities and powers, rugged powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So you must be prepared and God sent the Holy Spirit to prepare you. 
And so you will find out that you will go through series of trials. All those trials are not necessarily the battle. They are not necessarily, necessarily the race. They are designed to prepare you for the race so that on the day of the race, you've been well trained. Look at David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Israel is facing a giant, the champion of the Philistines, Goliath. And all of Israel um, are, are, are afraid and they are, they are, they've, been, they've been paralyzed by fear. But here comes David. David was already prepared for Goliath. He was already prepared. God had prepared him. He had gone through series of training. God began to train David. David first met a bear. He met a lion. He said, I pulled the lion by the beard and I grabbed my sheep out of his mouth. That is training before the battle. The battle that made David known in Israel was not the battle with the bear. It was not the battle with the lion. The battle that made David known in Israel was the battle with Goliath. And prior to that battle, he had fought a series of, battle in, of battles in preparation for the main battle. So that on the day he met Goliath, the Lord that was with him, Goliath fell down flat. Hmm. And this race of life, we are called to run this race from the day we are born, our date of birth, till the day we die, our date of death. But the dynamics of the race begins to change when you are born again. Your date of birth is a physical date of birth. And your spiritual date of birth is a spiritual date of birth. So when you are born again in the spirit, the dynamics of the race begins to change. All of a sudden, there is more spiritual opposition against your race. All of a sudden, the enemy is determined that you will not finish your race. If you don't finish your race, you've not won. You must finish your race. Some races are short, some races are long. Some races are uphill, some races are downhill. Regardless, you must finish the race that has been set before you. And to finish that race, you must be determined to win. How determined are you to win? Do you give up easily? Look at Abraham. The Bible says he was fully persuaded. He wasn't partially persuaded. He was fully persuaded. To, to win, you must be fully persuaded. Are you determined to win? If you're determined to win, begin to prepare. Go into training. Fasting and prayer. Study the word of God. Be determined to win. Study the word of God. Go into rugged training. Why? What does training do? Why does an athlete need to train before a race? I mean, he has the skills, he's gifted, he's an athlete, he has the skills, he has the, the body of an athlete, but why does he still need to train? Because training builds endurance. Many believers, once they see the enemy, or once they enter into a difficult um, course in their race, they want to give up. Why? Because they've not built up endurance. And so you need to train your spirit man so that you build up endurance because the race may be rugged the battle may be rugged but if you build up endurance you will stay the race you will stay the battle in the name of jesus so preparation and training which is discipleship actually which is discipleship actually is is necessary to produce the endurance and the ability to overcome in spite of all the obstacles and hindrances. So you must be discipled by the word of God. And because you are prepared and you are going through training, in the day of the race, you could even go the extra mile. You could even go the extra mile. So you must be determined to win. And if you're determined to win, you must set your eyes on the finish line. Don't get distracted. Athletes that win, don't get distracted. When you're running your race, that is not the time to be saying bye-bye to the crowd. That's not the time to be looking um, if your best friend is in the crowd cheering you. That's not the time to see who is sitting down and watching. That is the time to keep your eyes on the prize. Many Christians, many of us, instead of keeping our eyes on the prize, we are bothered and concerned about what people say and what people think. 
if you keep being concerned about what people would say and what people would think guess what they would always say they would always think then if that means your eyes is not on the finish line and if your eyes are not on the finish line and your eyes are on what people would say or think then how can you win you must be determined you must zero your mind you must have a one mind you must have your mind made up you must be focused an athlete that runs in every direction can, can, can never win the race. So, brother, sister, we must be focused because the enemy will do everything to distract you. The enemy will bring everything your way to distract you, to upset you, to make you lose your cool. But because you've been in training, because you've been prepared, what will make others lose their cool won't make you lose your cool because you know what is at stake. You must be determined to win. Those that are determined to win, always win. Those that are determined to win, always win. Make up your mind that no matter what the devil throws at you, you are going to win. And for victory to come to you, it doesn't come on a platter of gold. You're going to need faith. But like I said, you're also going to need preparation and training. You're going to need discipline. You can't be saying in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to win. And you're not disciplined. You must be disciplined enough. You must be disciplined to go through the rigors of discipleship so that on the day of testing, God's name will be glorified through you. Hmm. Now, we are going through a series of tests and trials. These are the end times. These are perilous times. And God has so trained us in our ministry, Overcomers in Christ group of churches. God has so trained us to be content with little and content even with much. There are times we've gone on fasting for seven days, no food, just water. Some of us have gone on fasting 30 days, 35 days, no food, just water. I'm not saying that to, beef, to toot our horns. I'm not saying that to, to wear a big head. On my shoulder but I'm saying that to say that sometimes that kind of training is required because you don't know what you're going to meet ahead of you there are some kinds that don't go out except by prayer and fasting are you going to wait for the day you meet that kind that does not go except by prayer and fasting before you begin to pray and fast so you must train your spirit man beforehand so that on the day of the battle because the battle can start at any time in spiritual world in the realm of the spirits, they don't give notice that the battle starts today. It just starts. Before you know it, you're in a battle. Before you know it, you're running a race. So, sometimes you will have to live with little and sometimes you will have to live with sufficient. When you have to live with little, don't grumble, don't complain. Remember, it's just a test. It is training for what is ahead. What is ahead. So, my brother, my sister, it may get tougher. It may get rougher. But know that you're in training. It's just a test. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 28 that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So all this that is going on around us is going to work for your good. But like 1 Corinthians 9 24 says, run in such a way, in such a way. Maybe you need to change the way you are running your race. Some of you need to change the way you're running your race and start running in such a way as to obtain the prize. And the best prize, you're not going to get, when you win the race, you're not going to get a gold cup or a trophy, gold trophy. What you're going to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the rest of your master. That is what you're going to hear. When you've done all that you know how to do in Christ Jesus, at the end of the journey, you would say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. Now there awaits me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day and to all that long for his appearing. Why? Because you are determined to win and you won. So keep away the distractors. Keep away the naysayers. Keep away those that say, oh, if I were you. Guess what? They are not you. They are not you. They are not appointed to run your race. Don't listen to if I were you. 
Listen to what is God saying. What is God saying? Put God at the center. Don't put human opinion at the center. Maybe you're running an uphill race right now and everything seems haywire. Everything seems scattered. I'm here to agree with you in prayer right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift up my brother, I lift up my sister. Father, whatever is before them, I pray that in their hearts, O oh God, they will be determined to win. That they will know that they are more than conquerors. That they are overcomers in Christ. That because Christ overcame, they shall overcome also. I speak defeat in the name of Jesus to all spiritual enemies, enemies in high places. Those that are walking against your destiny, walking against your glory. I speak defeat to them in the name of Jesus. I speak victory to you in the name of Jesus. Mandarabako city. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That you would arise and shine that you will be determined that you will set your face as flint that no matter what you will come out victorious i thank you father lord be with them be with my brother be with my sister through the trials that they face that they will have a testimony because of the faith and the endurance and the determination they had to win Thank you that we are winners in Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is Idemu Diak um, I pray that this message will be a blessing to you. It will encourage you in your walk, in your race, in your battle. Be determined to win. You're going to make it. You're going to win. At the end, you will say what the devil meant for evil. God turned it around for good. That actually is my testimony. God bless you. Subscribe to Warfare Mindsets. You'll be getting more of these messages to strengthen you on your journey. Shalom. <laughs>